Hello everyone, Simon here. Welcome back to the architecture of this Honor 2 series. Today we are in the Upper Syria district. Um, we are on top of a cliff, in fact. If you look around. So we come in by tram, and we can see that oh, there's more stuff above us actually. So we are on the side of a cliff. And Upper Syria District is basically the most normal part of Karnaka that we visit in the game. What do I mean by most normal? Um, as we look around you see that it's prosperous and there's very little decay. So this is like normal Karnaka. If nothing was going wrong and everything was going well. But uh, let me not talk about it and instead show you what's going on. Oh, before I go in... Yeah, about the like this, these cliff things, cliffside buildings, and having buildings right on top of cliffs. I know it looks really cool, and in terms of gameplay, it does form a wall around the level, so you can't you know escape the level by jumping out. But practically speaking, architecturally speaking, this is super dangerous. I mean, I live in Auckland, New Zealand, and just this past week, I'm recording this. Just this past week, there's been like heavy rains, and there's been landslides. <laughs> And people have had their houses um, basically made uninhabitable by landslides. Landslides happen in the real world. Like, you can't. Something like this? It looks cool, but it's just waiting to fall off the cliff, right? And then when you fall off the cliff here, you, you collapse to those down below and you demolish those buildings down there as well. It's not safe, it's not sensible. Don't do this in the real world. Like, live on slightly sloping ground, right? If it's too flat, you can get flooded. If it's too steep, you can get landslides. Slightly sloping ground so you don't get flooded, but also you don't get landslides is the best. This is not, this is not a good idea. <laughs> I don't care how good it looks, I don't care how cool you think this is. You're gonna regret it, right? Okay, let's get into Upper Syria District. Oh, look how fancy this is. We've got statues, fancy gates. Uh, it's not open though. <laughs> it's gated. I think the, the fact that it's gated does tell us something too. It is a rich part of the city and the security is correspondingly high, right? Um, let's go over here. There's a map here conveniently. So here is a map of the Upper Syria district. We are at 6, the carriage station. We just... So see those tracks there? We got off the carriage and we're here now. In front of this building. So at number 2, there's a red camellia beauty parlor. A beauty parlor. <laughs> you can tell how much money people have to spend by the fact that they are spending it on beauty. Not food, right? Not housing, not energy. Beauty. So are these people have enough money to spend on luxuries. Uh, the street goes around, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. There's a canal here. We're going to go down the edge of this canal, through here, look at number one, Colobron Pl Plaza. There's a bit of a plaza back there. Uh, it's kind of more like a courtyard than a plaza, to be honest. Uh, and then we're going to follow this road up, up these stairs into this square. There's a Cienfuegos Pharmacy here. But that's closed. So there's a bit of a, a square here, and then up the stairs here, there's another square. Number four is Dolores Michaels Bank. That is a, a whole complete building that we're going to look at in the next video. So we won't look at it this video, but that's where the bank is. Number five, there's a Christopher Jorge's office. George Jorge's office? Jorge's office? How, how do you pronounce that? George. Christopher George's office, basically. So there's a square here, a bank here, and then we're going to come from here back around to here. There are a couple of buildings here. There is a, uh, a house, Shen Yan's house. Shen Yan is a singer. His house is here. It's a special house. He's a rich person, so we're going to look at that. And then there's a Spectre Club here. This is a club. Uh, and then this loops back to here, and then we come back to the entrance. So we're going to go around. I'm going to go to here first, and we're going to go around, go around, go around and then go around in, in a loop. Okay, that's the plan. Uh, 
however, before all that, there is also an apartment up here that we can look at. I'm gonna look at a few apartments, I might not look at all of them because they're kind of more or less the same thing. Down here we have a flower shop. Um, strange that the main door to the flower shop is blocked, right? You might think, well, maybe it's abandoned. Maybe it's abandoned. It's not abandoned because if it's abandoned, all the flowers will be dead, right? So the fact that the flowers are healthy and well tended means that the shop is not abandoned. But I guess somebody delivered some trees and just kind of blocked the front door with the trees. <laughs> uh, that should be just temporary, right? Because the flowers are still fresh, that means the flower shop is still operating. Oh, Eolina, Eolina Ray, private residence. Alright, so let's have a look at Miss Ray's apartment. Look at that. Flowers, am I right? Uh, if we look around, a little bit of water damage to the walls there, but otherwise, things are in good condition. Fairly plain, right? Just simple, single colour walls, so nothing too fancy, but well maintained, and somebody is taking care of the flowers. So it's definitely uh, tended to, right? Somebody, somebody cares enough to take care of the flowers around here, right? It's not a, an abandoned place, it's not... They're not too poor to, to be able to afford flowers. I'm guessing the bedroom's back there, because there's no bedroom over there. There's gonna be... I think there's wallpaper. Uh, the wallpaper peels a little bit. I'm not sure about this. I was looking at the level earlier, and a lot of the buildings have peeling wallpaper, and I'm not sure why. Because aside from the peeling wallpaper, this apartment is perfectly fine, and it's like perfectly well taken care of. It seems strange to me that a person would like take care of the flowers, but not take care of the wallpaper. <laughs> why would you? Why would you not? Why would you not fix that? Like, why would you not fix fix this? This right? Uh, I think that's a mistake. I don't think they should have had the peeling wallpaper. I think they should have like perfectly good condition wallpaper. Because like all the buildings, apart from the wallpaper, everything is fine. Like this is, you know, somebody works here. They do drawings. They take pictures. They take care of the plants, right? The kitchen is in, in perfectly good condition. I mean, there's a bit of water damage there, I guess. But you know, they're, they're having potatoes for lunch. <laughs> And they got like food going on. Like for a, for an apartment that is occupied and otherwise well cared for, why would the wallpaper be damaged and that not fixed? Right? That, that, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that should be like like that. Doesn't really make sense, right? For the wallpaper to be damaged, but everything else to be fine. So if we ignore the wallpaper, though. A perfectly normal apartment. <laughs> the most normal apartment in the whole game so far. I mean, if you remember the places we've been through in this series, like the Dust District and, <laughs> and everything else, this is like the most normal part of the city. Over here we have a square. Uh, don't mind the dead body. There is a dead body lying there, but that's... I don't know, I don't know why that happened. <laughs> I think that's an AI bug. Uh, I didn't kill him, is what I'm trying to say. Something, something else happened to him, and I didn't see it happen. But aside from the dead body, a very nice garden. Look at that. I mean, people are just hanging out. Just got a fancy hat, just kind of chilling out on the chair, enjoying the sun. Nice place. I mean, if you had an apartment around here, and you go out your apartment, and there's a nice park just outside of your apartment, I think you'd be pretty happy. You know what I mean? This seems like a pretty nice part of town. Uh, over here, we have this place, which is... It's got a nice view, let's, let's just say that. I don't know if this is safe, because we're like... over the edge of a cliff. But we do get a nice view out there. I think that might be the Grand Canal. I'm not sure though, it's a little small. I, I thought the Grand Canal would be wider. If you remember the map of Karnaka, 
Oh, it's a, it's a bit foggy, isn't it? You can't even see very much. Uh, we get another view of this later on, and we might get a clearer view of the distance. I think this is the Grand Canal, but I'm not sure, because it seems too narrow. The city just keeps going up now. Alright, let's get out of here and play the music. So over here we have the Red Camellia Beauty Salon. Hmm. Living Leech Treatment. Draw out your inner beauty. I'm sure it will. Look at this place. I mean, it's nicely furnished, right? Look at it. Pretty nice. Everything's clean and tidy. No sign of decay. Hair tinting back there. Actually, it's not hair tinting back there. That's just a sign. It's, this is the storage room. I don't know why they put it above the door when it's actually not. Behind here. Scented Sarkonos Mineral Wash. Brightens, invigorates. Karnaka Spa Package. Oh, Spa Package. Nice. Alright, so as I said... Authorized personnel only. As I said, people in this part of town have enough money to spend on beauty on beauty treatments and spas oh Eolina Ray was a was the tattoo artist remember we went into her apartment before and this is where they do the tattoos right right and again everything's in good condition it's uh, quite nicely furnished, right? not too extravagant, but you know, there's enough detailing here to, to impress the clients. And then over here, we do have, this is a back room, where you have, oh, there's no door in the door, we are strange. Uh, this is, I guess, storage. Even the storage, if you look at the state of the walls and the ceilings and the floors, everything's in good condition. The floor is still polished. So... Once again, the most normal part of Karnaka where there's absolutely nothing wrong. Alright, let's keep going. There's another apartment up here. Not sure if there's too much for us to see. Oh, this is in slightly less good condition. I mean, the war here, this is a little bit alarming. Somebody should fix that. But even this, it's really just like replastering the war. I mean, if, if there's any leaks, they might fix the leaks. I don't think there are leaks. I think you just need to replaster the walls every now and then. Right. Uh, I mean, it's a little bit bad. It's not too bad. You can clean this up. Not too bad. Alright, so here, what is this? Um, Mamalia Asu, Doctor of Dental Surgery. Okay. We're looking forward to a dentist office back here. A lot of flowers. I don't remember seeing any flowers in the other parts of the game, except in, like, specifically uh, rooms where they grow flowers. Like, I don't remember seeing decorative flowers in other parts of the city. I might be wrong. I might be completely wrong. But it didn't stand out, is what I mean. And so, like, you can tell you're in the nice part of town when there's flowers. <laughs> when there's pot plants and flowers, you're in the nice part of town. Like, if you're in the poor part of town, they won't be able to afford pot plants. Uh, hey, that's a picture of the Adamaya Institute. Okay, so this is the dentist, right? This is the office. I guess you is the reception. You can wait here for your dentist appointment. And then you come here, and you get your tooth drilled by the dentist. Oh, that's alarming, isn't it? Tooth extraction. It's a hammer. It's a hammer! Isn't that alarming? Oh, look, hammers. <laughs> that's not... Alright, let's not... Let's not think too much about dentistry. Back here for a couple of toilets. Makes sense. Uh, curious. We have a uh, rooftop access. 
with a wind turbine, except we're missing the turbine blades. Otherwise, they'll be wind powered. There is a turbine over there. Is there anything we need to say about the roof? Oh, these trees are way too close to the buildings, by the way. I mean, we've seen trees close to buildings before, but in this district, for some reason, they are literally touching the buildings. That's not good. It's not good for the trees, and it's not good for your buildings. Don't, don't, like, have trees touching your buildings. Because trees move, you know. Like, when the wind blows, they sway a little bit, and, you know, like, it, it's not good for your building. And it's not good for the tree. Just keep a healthy distance between your buildings and your trees, and everybody will be happy. Uh, I don't think there's too much for us to say about all of this. Okay, let's go back down. Right, so that's, that's this square. Let us continue around. Follow the road. There's a bit of a gate. So this is the rich pilot town, and even in the rich pilot town, this the different like sections of the city are divided by these gates. So uh, it's not just security is not only for the poor, <laughs> security is also for the rich. I guess you could argue that security is more for the rich than for the poor. Um, I just wanna okay. Let's just check this. This is a uh, bronze na taxidermy. Preserver and stuffer of all kinds of animals. Alright, we have an animal stuffer. Huh? Look at that. Stuffed animals. Stuffed fish, even. Wait a minute, that's a human skull. <laughs> wait, wait a minute. That's not right. <laughs> Alright, hey, look at that. We have bones and animals. More animals, heads and things. Uh counter is there and uh, various things on sale right the shops in good condition oh the wallpaper again other than the wallpaper the shops in good condition seems to be uh, running a good business private area back here we have some filing and equipment for stuffing animals I suppose yeah, no, what is it with the human skulls, though? <laughs> it's concerning, isn't it? It's the basement down here. I don't think we... No, it is, we don't need to go down the basement. Although we will know that the basement is brick, and it's, um... not ornamented or, or decorated. Okay, so this wall is closed. I think this is purely for security reasons. Because we can get to the other side of the wall. No problems. And we will later on, because remember, we're going around, down the canal, and then up the other street, and then when we get back up the other street, we'll be on the other side of this wall. I think this is purely for security, for dividing the city into different zones. Anyway, here we have the canal, look at this. Remember how in the game, it's been shown to us that there's a canal system underneath the city. But we never see very much of it, right? Anyway, here's a part of it. They finally show us actual canal logs. So uh, how they get these boats up the side of a cliff is... They raise them up using these ship elevators. Right, and then it goes under the city in there, right? Uh, most of this is fairly reasonable. Except for that one. So this lock is not as plausible. Look at how high this is. <laughs> this is not. This is not plausible. It's not plausible. I looked this up before, actually. Like, are there ship locks this tall in the world? No, there isn't. Like, the tallest the tallest ship lock in the UK is only about 6 meters. 
six meters is what? Two, four, six, like there? There to there is like six meters, maybe a bit less? This is three times as tall as the tallest ship lock in the UK. Uh, yeah, no, this is not plausible. The thing about water is, because like, there's water pressure, right? The water pressure is going to push your gate out. If you have a short gate, there's only like this much water in it. But if you have a tall gate, you have like a lot more water. And the water pressure down the bottom is, is going to be crazy. Crazy high. And it's, you, you need a very, very strong gate to hold back that much water. And I just don't think that this actually works physically. Like, I don't think the physics works. So, anyway. So aside from that bit, aside from the fact that this is three times taller than it should be, we can see that the canal kind of goes down there and then continues into a cave into the side of the city. Like, if they just made this shorter... Oh, they can't, because this is the edge of the map. If they made this shorter, then we as the player can just jump out and then escape the level. <laughs> yeah, I know. They have to make this a really poor cliff to communicate to the player that if you try to jump off and run away, you would die. Like, the, the, the fall would be too much. So because this is the edge of the map, they can't make this any shorter. But because they chose to make this so tall, it's just not, um, not plausible at all. You would need a much stronger gate than this to hold back that much water. This gate is, is like, way too thin. Alright, so... Not too much to say about the canal. Wait, what's that? Why is there a crane here? What is the purpose of this crane? Do they... No, there's no purpose for this crane. Because anything you want to lift up from down there, you just bring up the lock, right? I don't know what's going on. Alright, I'm gonna walk away from that situation. Uh, so here's the map again. We are here right now. So we came up here and then down. This is ward off. We came up and down here. Now we're gonna check out this place. And in fact, there are street signs. Isn't that cool? Canal Passage, City of Karnaka. They have street signs. I don't remember there being street signs in the other parts of the game either. Were there? No, right? This street is called Varela Way. Uh, and it's got a double tram track. You know, this actually looks a lot more normal than every other part of the game. Like the double tram track? Whereas, like, almost everywhere else there's only a single tram track, and so then you can't travel in both directions at the same time. <laughs> Alright, the most normal street in Karnaka. And it gets, it goes that way as well. So this... They've put in these uh, boards in between the tracks and, and these tiles so you can walk across them. Once you get past here, it just becomes pure train with sleepers. Very interesting. I mean, it almost seems like a completely different... I know this is the expansion, right? So this is the um, Death of the Outsider expansion. So it's not part of the main game. But this almost feels like a completely different city. Just like having the double tram tracks instead of the single tram tracks. And having the tram tracks like on the ground instead of like above the ground. Remember how like in all the other cities like you have tram tracks that's kind of floating in the air? This this seems way too normal. <laughs> Alright, Colobron Plaza is up here. It's called a plaza, but it's more like a courtyard. Because the plaza doesn't open up to any other streets. Usually a plaza would be a public place in the city. And this 
It's called a plaza, but it's kind of not very public, is it? Because it's completely surrounded on all four sides with private buildings. And this, the, none of the streets go through. Usually the plaza would have at least one street that goes all the way through. But no, this is like off, off a street, up a staircase, past a couple of gates. There's a gate down there, another gate here. So it's more like a courtyard, actually. But calling it a plaza implies that it is public space that is open to the public at all times. Um, I don't, I don't know how to make of that either. There's a stage here. The stage is temporary, right? It probably is. Yeah, so there's wooden stuff built here. There's gonna be, uh, something going on in this space. Let's go take a brief look. So there's more apartment buildings back here. Number two. These wooden boards look fairly plain, don't they? And the walls are a little bit more cracked. So I guess this is less well maintained than some of the other apartments. But it's not bad, or it's not falling apart or anything. Uh somebody's lounge, and then we can't go any further into their apartment. Alright, let's go back down. I guess the only odd thing is that there's no... there's no sidewalk. Would it be safe to, like, walk on the tracks? Probably not, right? The trams just come barreling through. And there's very little sidewalk. <laughs> this seems kind of dangerous, actually. Oh, and another thing. If you walk around... As you walk around the city, you see people, like, painting the walls. Look at this. So, this is significant, because... People are actively maintaining this part of the city. Which is not like we have we didn't see something like this in any other part of the city. And so that kind of goes along with the fact that the other parts of the city are falling apart. Like there's a lot of decay because nobody's repairing anything. Whereas in this particular part of the city, in the upper Syria district, there are actually people fixing the city all the time. And so that you know, that goes along with the fact that this is much better maintained. Much better maintained than the other parts of the city, right? And I mean, it might not be obvious, but in order to, to keep a city intact, it does actually need to be repaired constantly. Like, if you travel through a city, like, not every building needs to be repaired all the time, but in any at any point in time, some building in, in some part of the city will be being repaired. Because things keep, things keep de decaying by themselves, right? And in order f to have a city stay intact, you just have to like maintain it actively. Alright, so here we have Ivan Jacobi, Administrator, Division of Bridges, Roads and Cemeteries. So he is a city administrator, apparently, in charge of infrastructure and cemeteries. Let's go uh, check out his office, which is in here. Again, we have this fancy wallpaper, and everything is well maintained. Floors and ceilings are fine. Uh, we still have the pipework being retrofitted in the buildings. Okay, here's Jacob, uh, Ivan Jacoby's office. Everything's in great condition. Uh, not sure what those other rooms are gonna be. I think this is his office. It's not his home. Hold on. What does that say? City Administrator Ivan Jacoby, right? A pool table. Hmm. Is it an office? Does he play pool all the time? In his office? Shouldn't this be a meeting room? A meeting table? Here's his office. Uh, he does some paperwork here, I guess. A pool table, though. 
maybe he doesn't do very much work. <laughs> uh, statues and curtains and everything else. Alright, very fancy. A wealthy, well-maintained part of the city. Across the road, we do have another building we can walk into. What does that say? Teresa Sinfuego's pharmacist healing runs in our family. Alright, we have pharmacist in here. Looks fine to me. It's, I mean, it's pretty simple, but uh, it's not falling apart. Well, I mean, except for the peeling wallpaper again. I, I honestly don't know about the peeling wallpaper. I think they should, like, cut back on how much peeling wallpaper there is. Alright, so the pharmacist, we have a sort of a chemistry lab in here, and we have some broken bottles. This is part of the story. Um, the pharmacist got shut down by the city, and I believe their, uh, their facilities got ransacked too. Um, in the game, there's a bit of corruption going on, and they shut down the pharmacist for corrupt reasons. I'm not going to go into too much detail about that, but this is not neglect or anything, like somebody sent some thugs here to break things, is what happened. <laughs> so this is not because um, the city as a whole is falling apart. It is a particular grudge. Same with this, like that got broken, all that got ransacked. Ah, uh, this is plot related. Alright. Wait a minute, it's a bedroom here. Oh, there's a doorway there that we can't go through. I assume the rest of the apartment is through there, I guess. Let me just check again. Is there a door here? Oh yes, there is a door here, okay. The rest of the apartment is somewhere in between. Back out onto the street. The tram tracks continue underneath the city. That's kind of interesting. I mean, this like two-way tram track thing, it looks like a major tram route, right? And I guess there's like a stop here. Stop, I mean, there's no obvious tram stop. But I guess it will stop along the street at some point, and then it goes underneath the city and it goes somewhere else. So this would be like a major artery. Major tram artery. Uh, there has been an accident here though, so that's unfortunate. Ah, what? Wait, what? I... what hit me? I don't know what hit me. That was a glitch, I think, with the game. Alright, heading up the staircase. Just looking back, seeing if there's anything else we should look at. No, no, it's just, it's just really normal. It's a really normal part of the city. Alright, up here we have a bit of a square. There's the wall again. So there's a gate there, but there wasn't a gate there. And putting a, a, a I mean there was a gate there, but there wasn't a wall there. And I guess adding the wall then closes off this square. And there's a bank beyond it too. I guess that secures the bank, except there's no gate here. And there's no gate on the other street there either. I mean, these gates supposedly cut off parts of the city, but just looking at the way things are here, it doesn't quite cut off the parts of the city. Maybe that's deliberate. Maybe what they're saying is that even though there is security in this part of town, it's not that serious, right? Because it's not that much crime. Or they're not that worried about an uprising among the citizens. Like in the other parts of the city, the placement of the gates and the walls are much more strategic, right? They do a much better job of actually completely cutting off districts of the city. So, yeah, I guess they're just like not as serious about the security here because it's less of a problem. Over here is the pharmacy. It's been shut down, 
so remember the the apartment and the lab that was ransacked here we have the Cienfuegos druggist and pharmacist so this is the actual pharmacy and it's been permanently closed for debt owed right so again story related uh, and we're not going to go into it right now up here we have another square another fountain another statue another nice little park and some guy is even sweeping the floor that's the most normal part of Hanaka. Ah, oh, there's someone sweeping the floor! I mean, just can you remember the other parts of the city where everything's falling apart and people are dying left and right? And everyone's poor and being evicted and then... Look how normal this is. Right. This is Kanaka as it's supposed to be, I suppose. Look at the... look how detailed that is. Look at, look at all that. Look at the detailing on this stuff. I mean, this is the rich part of town. And so everything is very, very decorated. Okay, so there's a... what is this? Christopher George, editor-at-large at the Karnaka Gazette. Alright, this is the newspaper office. Let's go upstairs. Plain walls. Uh, we have pipes and things retrofitted on the outside of the walls. And then in here, not sure what's in that room or there, but over here we have the newspaper man's office. A lot of books. Our reporter is busy typing on his typewriter. And over here we have a photography lab. There's no printing press in here. I don't know if you would print in here actually. But he does have... what's going on there? Oh, scandal! Someone's having an affair. Alright, so there's a photography lab. I guess maybe the printing press might be back in behind these doors. Um, oh, very plain walls. It's just plain white walls. Again, like, well maintained, but very, um... Plain. I guess the newspaper doesn't make very much money, huh? Like, it's not richly ornamented. It's very ordinary. Alright, and then at the end of the square is the Dolores Michaels Bank. We are not going into the bank, and I guess I'm not going to talk about the outside of the bank either. This next, in the next video, we're going to look at the bank in more detail. Alright, let's get back out into the street and let's come down here and through this gate. Alright, we're back here. Again, like the trees really close to the buildings. In fact, it's like intersecting the building. That's way too close to the building. up here, another tree that's really close to the building. Is that a cliff face? That's, I mean... I understand that verticality is a theme in this game, but... There's no way a cliff face like this would be safe. Like, those rocks would eventually break off and hit someone on the head, right? And what what's going on here? The building is just intersecting into the cliff? That's not how buildings work. That's not how buildings work. Okay, well. Back through here, there's another security gate. And then we're back where we started. Where we came up the tram from there at the beginning. And then we went around, went around in a loop. Around the most ordinary neighborhood in the city. There are two more buildings here. Let's look through these as well, though. So, as, as I said, there is Shen, Yan, Shen, Shen Yan's house, the Boreal Songbird, interviews by appointment only. Right, so there's a singer. That's Shen Yan, by the way, he sings. Private concert sold out. Let's go inside his house, take a look.
so he's one of the wealthier individuals in this part of town and he has a big house although I mean it's big but it's kind of plain right it's not um, it's not ornate or anything I mean it's not it's not ugly by any means but it's uh, rather muted, the colors. Okay, let's walk around the roofs. A hallway here. A dining on one side. Dining close to the entrance, right? So if you have guests, you just bring them straight to, to eating. And then the dining is also close to the kitchen. Very good, very practical. Well-designed house. Uh, we have house plans here. I'm not sure this helps us very much though, because a lot of the rooms are not labeled. The rooms that are important to the gameplay is labeled, which is only a private collection, and then sleeping quarters, and then a back door to the Spectre Club. Everything else is not labeled. All right, let's go back into the kitchen. Uh, before we go to the kitchen, look at the ornamentation out here, if you can. It's kind of dark though, isn't it? Oh, there's the uh, the acoustic panels again. There's a lot of these acoustics, acoustics panels in this house. And it kind of makes sense because the person who lives here is a musician, so they care about acoustics. Okay, look at the ornamentation there, and then we go into the kitchen, which is like the, uh, the servant areas. Significantly less ornamented, but still in fairly good condition. They do have a dumb waiter too, look at this thing. A dumbwaiter is basically a small elevator for food. It allows you to bring food up to the other floors without carrying them upstairs, <laughs> uh, which probably saves a lot of accidents. A decently sized kitchen. And the back... oh, there's no back door though. Maybe there should be a back door, because how do you get the food in here? And how do you get the rubbish out? Alright, there's a bit of a sink area here. And then we have our boiler. A smaller stove, for the staff, I guess. Yeah, there's no back door, that's a little strange. I would have put a back door in here somewhere. So on this side of the house, we have a bit of a bar. And then we have a bit of a sitting area. Right, so the bottom floor, the ground floor is basically like for the guests. Uh, if you're just here for dinner and a chance, then, then you don't really have to go upstairs. Um, they've put a bit of storage underneath the stairs, which... Normally, a storage space underneath stairs makes a lot of sense, except the problem with this house is that the stairs are right in the entryway, right? And so having your storage right in the entryway is a little strange. Like, if this was walled off, that would make more sense to have, like, a storage space back there. So wallpaper is peeling. Why is the wallpaper peeling in literally the richest house in the district. Can we stop with the peeling wallpaper when it doesn't make any sense? Alright, second floor. There's a... There's a guest journal here. Uh, where should we go first? Let's go this way first. Uh, oh, the, the dumb waiter comes up here. Not too important. Here we have a display room for various things that show off the musical talents of Shen Yan. So we have like microphones. Is that a microphone? It is. And then we have like musical instruments. We have sheet music and more musical instruments. Um, Would a musician put this stuff on display? I guess if they're expensive musical instruments, you would put them on display. And then in the adjoining room, we have a music room. Remember downstairs, the poster said, like, private concerts sold out? 
I guess this would be the private concert, right? And it's very private. There's only 12 people at a time. And uh, you would play music and sing with them. Again, acoustic panels in the ceiling makes a lot of sense because this is a music room, so there will be noise down here. Uh, that goes back out to the staircase. On this side... I'm not sure if that does anything. There's a seating area. There's a back um, staircase here. We're not going to go too far into here. This goes to the Spectre Club. It's a back door into the Spectre Club. We're not going to take the back door because we want to look at the club uh, for its under its own merits. We'll go in the front door. Okay, so back here, back in the uh, central foyer. Restrooms. Uh, restrooms look like this. So there's three stalls and two basins. So this is a public restroom, right? Because if it's a private restroom, you wouldn't have so many stores. So the house is designed for these private concerts for 12 people at a time. I mean, like, the, the, it, like they're small in scale, but there are all the pieces of a public concert uh, uh, venue. <laughs> inside this home, right? They're, they're smaller than you'd expect, but all the pieces are there, including a public toilet, or a, pub, a toilet that's designed for a lot of people at a, at a single time, and then a music room there. Which is like, which is quite interesting because this is his private house, it's private residence, but he also hosts concerts in his private house. I guess that's the sort of thing that really rich people with really big houses would do, right? I mean, I wouldn't know. I live in I live in an ordinary sized house, and like I couldn't imagine dedicating a part of my house to serving public events <laughs> inside my house. <laughs> but I guess if you're rich enough and you have a big enough house, that's the sort of thing you would do. Seeing a public toilet in a private house just throws me off just a little bit. But I, I can I can I can understand it. It's a little unusual. All right, so the third floor. Let's go straight into here. We have. I think this is the private study of uh, Shen Yan. A lot of books and a desk here. There's a skylight, but it's not really a skylight because. It's day outside, and so if this was sky, it'll, the light would be pouring in. It's not the sky back there, so I don't know what's up there. Or if that's just a mistake somehow. Like, why, why, why are we not seeing the sun back there? Is there another floor up there? We can't go up there, by the way, so we don't know. Like here, for example, look at this. This is right, because... The sun is up, and so the sunlight is pouring in. I'm not sure if that's an oversight, a mistake, or if there really is another space up there. But we never go see it in the game, so I, I have no idea. Alright, so off the private study, we have the bedroom. With another desk. This desk seems to have more paperwork on it than the other desk. A lot of desks for one person. Uh, the bed, more acoustic panels up there. In the game, he's practicing singing in his room, which is curious. But if he does that, that would explain the acoustic panels in the roof. Uh, usually you would need acoustic panels in the bedroom, but if you're a singer and you sing all over the house, including in your bedroom, then I guess you would. Hey, the floor is very... Uh, very nicely polished. And then behind the bed we have a bath room. Well, we have uh, two baths. We have a bath, and then we have another bath. And then we have no toilet. Alright, so we have a double bath. <laughs> That's very fancy, isn't it? 
A bathroom behind your bed. Wow. Wow, I mean, I, I can't imagine being this rich. <laughs> uh, over here, we have a toilet and a basin. Okay. Alright, so this is basically the private rooms of Shenyang. Over here, we have a little sound room. So, some some rooms are designed to be completely, like to be acoustically completely disconnected from the outside. They're called anechoic chambers. Um, I don't think this is an anechoic chamber because I think you would still get some noise from the outside in here. I'm not sure though. Maybe it is an anechoic. Oh no, because the door is just a wooden door. But. The, the padding is to reduce the amount of sound that comes in from the outside, and I guess also to reduce the echo in here, right? And so when you play the piano, you don't hear the echo of the room, you only hear the piano. It's useful for some musical purposes. Oh, and in the game, you can, can you hear that? They put that in to make it so that it seems like it's uh, acoustically disconnected. You come back outside and then you hear that? It's a different background noise. But that's fake, that's not really a... Uh, it's not physics based, it's just um, you're in a different room and it gives you a different background noise. Here we have storage. Um, if you're wondering where all the people are, they're sleeping in the storage. Alright, it's not... <laughs> in order to do these architectural tours, I have to hide all the bodies, alright? <laughs> In the game, this place will be full of guards who are trying to kill you. Uh, all the guards are sleeping in there now. Back here, we have the servants' quarters. Uh, we have a bunk bed, and a chair, and then a little bit of a toilet. You will notice that the servants', servants quarters are nowhere near as well maintained or decorated as the outside. And so that is evidence that Shenyan doesn't really care about the poor people, right? He doesn't he doesn't pay any attention to how well his servants are living. He cares about his own space being nice, but he doesn't spend any money on his servants at all. So that's the kind of person Shenyan is. Hang on, how big these paintings are. Alright, so this is Shenyan's apartment. Interesting. Interesting that there's like a, a, a venue for concerts inside his home. Okay, let's go back outside. And then, on the other side of the street, is the Spectre Club, there. Uh, curiously, the Spectre Club doesn't go straight up. If you notice that, almost all the buildings in Karnaka is just straight up from the street. And that is to maximize floor space. In fact, like, parts of it stick out like that, to, ev to just to get squeeze in a little bit more floor space. We did say at the very beginning that when you have a city that has a lot of tall, narrow buildings, and even triangular buildings, like you're trying to use as much of the space as possible because land prices are high, and so you want to maximize the amount of internal floor space you get out of the city. And given that land prices are high, this is odd because this doesn't go straight up. So there's a little bit of a balcony up there. And then it just steps back from the balcony. So you, this, the Spectre Club doesn't take advantage of the entire envelope that it's entitled to. And it doesn't have, it doesn't, it's not maximizing the floor space that it has. Which is unusual in this city, right? I mean, in other cities, if, if it's not as densely populated, it wouldn't be surprising at all. But it's kind of remarkable in this city. Not sure why. 
Not sure why. It could be that the Spectre Club is just... Well, for one thing, it could be older. It says since 1841. It could just be that they have more money, so they don't care about having to maximize floor space. They can just buy more land. And maybe it's an older building. And uh, it's an older building from a time before land prices were as high, or before population pressures were as high, and therefore they were less um, concerned about getting the most floor space possible. Alright, the Spectre Club, again, very fancy on the outside. Very fancy on the inside as well. Everything is clean and tidy and in pristine condition, pretty much. Um, this is a cloak room, right? Alright, you put away your... your coats, and then we have the bar area. A central bar. Very good. And then around the bar, we have little sitting areas. One at the corner there, another one there. Ah, uh, you can sit at the bar if you want to. And then we have another little sitting area there, another one there, another one there. Right? Very interesting. I don't go to bars very much, but the way this is designed is that, you know, if you have like maybe two to four people in a group, then you can kind of find yourself a little alcove, get your drinks and, and have a chat. Uh, it's not designed for huge gatherings. I wonder if you could use this space for huge gatherings. You kind of can't, because the way the space is designed, it is like divided into smaller spaces. And it's not really amenable to like just a big crowd. I'm thinking like, you know, sometimes in, in the real world, you would, like during sporting events is a good example. You have a sporting event and then it's, the whole place is packed and then everybody's watching a giant TV. Like this bar doesn't seem to be amenable to that sort of thing. I mean, I know there's no TVs in, in Dishonored. But like having like a whole big crowd of people in here doesn't seem to work with this particular layout. Right, you would want to have like the bar on one side and then maybe seating on the outside in the same way but then the central area will, will be open. Oh, there's no dance floor either. I mean, there's no dancing <laughs> in this bar, right? I guess you could kind of dance here but it's not very big. Uh, what I'm saying is that it's a very sit-down kind of bar, a sit-down, quiet-talking kind of bar. It's not a rowdy, do-stuff kind of bar. If that makes sense, does that make sense? Like it's not a it's not a partying, rowdy partying bar. It's, it's a quiet. I guess it's kind of like upscale, quiet talking kind of bar. If that makes sense. Also, the ironwork is quite intricate. Look at that. Look at that fancy ironwork there. Oh, look at that. Very fancy. Oh, look at that. Very fancy leaf motifs. Look at that. Look at those like plant motifs and then these little things with the lights on it. So, uh, very, uh, relatively expensive decorations. Uh, this door is broken, but that's my fault. It's not supposed to be broken. I broke into the um, cloak room for loot. Anyway. If we come back... Behind this door, there is more Spectre Club upstairs. Uh, that says private there. This doesn't say private, that's interesting. I wonder if you need an invitation to get up here. There are more floors, not sure what goes on back there. But if we come to the third floor, we have the rest of the club. It is a Spectre Club, it's not a Spectre Bar. Right, so aside from the bar, there are also other rooms and facilities. Reading. <laughs> I mean, you wouldn't read in a bar. I guess you would read in a club, maybe. Uh, it's implied there's more spaces back there. We don't get to see it. That says private. So here we have some card games going on. We have cards on the tables. 
switch. Oh, it's locked. Uh, interesting. A lot of ornamentation, a lot of statues and decorations. So I think this is all about, like a game room, right? I mean, at least these guys are playing cards. Over on this side, we have a bigger sitting area. Oh, this is the door back into Shen Yun's house. Right, so the back door from Shen Yun comes to the Spectre Club. They're, they have, they're, they're associated. Shen Yun is a member of the Spectre Club. Over here, we have pipes, hoses, needles, or tubes, tubes and needles. I will explain what these are in a little bit, but they are doing tubes and needles in this part of the room. All right, more private, private, private. We have a bit of a storage room in here, and alarmingly, there are bodies in the storage room. <laughs> and then in this room, we have this contraption. So this, 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 this is a story, right? So in the game, the story is that these Spectre Club people, they are kidnapping people, and they are drawing out their blood and transfusing the blood to the club members. So this tube is drawing blood out of it. They put a person on the bed here, draw the blood out. This is a pump. And then they pump the, the dude's blood to other people who are sitting over here on these chairs with these pipes plugged into their bodies. And in the game, according to the story, the reason they do this is that when a person dies, they see the void. <laughs> Remember how in Dishonored, the void is this magical dimension where magic comes from? So, when a person dies, just as they are dying, they see the void. And usually, you don't get to see it without dying. But a somebody, some clever person, discovered that if you drain their blood, if you share blood with them, with a the dying person, you can... You can like have the blood flow into you and you can also see the void as they die so they're dying but because you're sharing blood with them you also get to see the void when they die <laughs> so the people at the spectre club are like getting visions of the void by killing other people and taking their blood that's the story so there's sort of like a, a human sacrifice blood magic thing going on and that's what this room is, right? So the Spectre Club is a human sacrifice facility. And this room is uh, kind of falling apart, not very well maintained. Would you do this? I mean, I understand this is supposed to be like a private area and bad things happen here. Would you sacrifice people in a dirty room? <laughs> or would you clean their room? And sacrifice them in a cleaner room? I'm not sure. Anyway, so like out in the public, everything is nice and clean and well decorated and well ornamented and everything's really fancy and expensive. And then you get to the back room and you find out that they're sacrificing people back here. So I guess that's the contrast, right? It's just supposed to really contrast to say, hey, all this, all this pretty stuff in the front, that's fake, man. Like, come back here and I'll show you the real stuff. And they're killing people. I get it, but maybe... I don't know. I mean, even though you're sacrificing people, you don't have to do it in a dirty room. <laughs> Necessarily. You can do it in a nicer room. But I guess for, like, uh, storytelling purposes, it's more compelling if, if the contrast is greater, right? Alright, so let's get out of the... Spectre Club, and that's pretty much the entire Upper Syria district. As I said, more or less the most normal part of the city. No decay, nothing weird happening, except for what's happening in the club. <laughs> like, aside from the human sacrifice in the club, everything is very normal. And in a way, normal means kind of boring, because there's less story to tell, there's less interesting stuff to try to figure out. Uh, before we leave though, the game does reuse this part of the game 
in two missions. And so in the bank job, we come back to the upper Syria district again, but it's a different time of the day. So I'm going to load this one. Um, in terms of architecture, there's nothing new really, but it's just evening. And so it's a different lighting condition. Um, so if you want to see this place in the evening, let's go take a walk around Upper Syria Gardens again. Oh, the street lights. So oh, there's a lot of street lights here. I don't remember if the other parts of the game are as well lit as this. I don't think they were, were they? No, I don't think they were. So, uh, well lit. In fact, a lot of lights. In fact, you'd be pretty safe walking around the street at night. <laughs> the most normal. Even the night times are quite pleasant. Like, there's nothing uh, foreboding or scary about this. Look how safe this is. Because there are so many lights and everything is well lit. <laughs> this is so normal! What's going on? I mean, you remember the other parts of the city from before. Oh, uh, they do close the gate there during the night. But it's kind of it's not very... Uh, I mean, it's okay, they close the gate, but then you just hop over this. <laughs> there are guards. Um, I have... I've removed the guards, but there are actually guards here. So they close the gates at night for security and they post guards to make sure uh, none of the riffraff go anywhere they're not supposed to, I suppose. Alright, let's, let's take the same tour, right? We come down here, go around the canal. Has the canal changed in any way? I mean, the canal can... like the water level can change in the canal. Have they changed it? No. They, there was a boat here, now there's a boat down there, so they moved the boat down one of these locks. But otherwise, even the water level has not changed. Oh, that's right. So, uh, it was foggy during the day, right? Now that it's the evening, it is significantly less foggy. And we do have a uh, much better view from here. So there's Adamai Institute. I can't quite see the Duke's Palace from here. I don't want to fall off or anything. Where is the Duke's Palace? Is it there? Is it back there? I mean, it's a very distinctive triangular shape. And we don't see any triangular shapes. So I'm not sure where the Duke's Palace is. Uh, we can see the canal goes all the way down to the harbour. I don't think it's wide enough to be the Grand Canal though. Not sure. Not sure if this is meant to be the Grand Canal. Uh, I think the sun's in the wrong place. It's supposed to be evening, right? Because east is that way, west is that way, the sun should like go like that. There's the moon. Unless it's early morning, which I don't think it is. I think it's early evening. Alright, well, I'm not sure about the sun. It seems to be in the wrong place. Coming back through here. Back to the main street, or at least the main tram route. Look at the lights. It's quite nice, isn't it? I wouldn't mind living in this city. That's not something I would have said in any other parts of Karnaka. <laughs> it's, it's thinking, I wouldn't mind living here. I would mind living in the Dust District for sure. I would mind living in some of the other places in Karnaka. Yeah, no, like this is the first time in the game that I've said, hey, I wouldn't mind living here. <laughs> this is the most normal part of Karnaka. Oh, we have a... Today in Celebron Prada, the public sale of various goods, lovely seas through to fold on debt owed to Dolores Michaels and Associates, deposit and loan bank. Alright, somebody has failed to pay their loans. 
and their stuff is being auctioned off here. So they're having an auction here. We saw earlier in the day there was a stage built here, right? And now we can see that they're having an auction. Uh, we're not gonna go back there, I don't think. Nothing too important for us to see. Just thinking, like, they call it a plaza. And no, it's not really a plaza, it's a square. It should be like Celebron Square. Or even like Celebron Courtyard. Plaza is usually bigger. Wider. Alright, and then up these stairs... This particular space is a little dark. Hmm. Could use a couple of street lights here, I think. Like this is a bit darker, a little bit more foreboding, right? Than all the other spaces. Yeah, I think they need another street light here or something. Let me come back here first. So this was the Spectre Club. Uh, we get the street lights back, and everything is nice and bright. Spectre Club and Shen Yun's house. Oh, I forgot to look at how this city, or the, how this part of the city joins with other parts. So here we have a tunnel that presumably connects to other parts of the city. It is blocked off. In fact, the pipe has fallen down. How would this have worked? Would this be pedestrian access? It doesn't look very good for pedestrian access. I mean, that could be vehicles only. Uh, and then through here, through this gate. So there's a tram. There's the tram that comes up through there. Okay, what about these roads? Do these connect anywhere? What I'm seeing is it looks like it's vehicle access only, right? There's a tramway. The tram comes up there. All of this doesn't go anywhere. And then this also is trams only. I don't think pedestrians are really allowed back there. Maybe they are. Maybe I'm wrong. That doesn't look like it, does it? This is... No, it doesn't look like pedestrians are really supposed to go back there. Maybe they are. I mean, they're doors. I mean, it looks like it's, it's trams only. I'm not sure. It looks like pedestrians can't get in here. Like you have to come in here by vehicle. That would kind of make sense because, you know, only rich people can afford, can afford vehicles and therefore you have a part of the city that's basically like a, a gated community that's cut off from the poor people. <laughs> and that's why it's so normal up here, because everybody's rich. That's what it looks like to me. Alright, and then finally we have the square and then Dolores Michaels Bank. The square is also fairly well lit. Alright, so I'm gonna end the video here. In the next video, we will look at the bank. Uh, is there anything for me to say to summarize the Upper Syria district? Not really. I don't, I don't really have anything to say about it. It's just, it's just really normal. <laughs> it's, it's just a normal city. I mean, it's quite wealthy. There are no poor people. There are no poor people. Not a single poor person. So it's a rich part of the city. Everything's in good shape. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so I'm gonna end the video here. I'll see you in the next one where we look at the bank.